as I'm coming out of this semi dreamlike trance, I just see this whitest, golden, brightest light. And the light just encompasses me. And in the middle of that light is where a face just comes into existence. And not just anybody's face. It's Touched by Heaven. Everyday encounters with God. Those moments when heaven and earth collide. And we see God. We see his hand reaching out to us, attempting to get our attention. And Darren's attention has been got here in this episode. Hi, it's episode 246. I'm your host, Trapper Jack. This is just crazy good stuff here. Uh, well, how often do you see in a title, Mother Mary and past life regression? What is all that about? Obviously not Christian. I kind of did not believe in it, but I wanted to give it a shot and just kind of understand if there's something to it. But the devil can play in there. The devil can play. I mean, if I'm the devil, I want you believing that you have hundreds of lives and don't sweat this one. You've got plenty of time. And that's what he does. But this is where Darren was at this minute, where he's seeking, searching, looking for comfort, looking for answers somewhere, somewhere in all of this. He was raised Southern Baptist. There was a time 30 years ago or so when he was living in South America, wanted to marry a girl that was Catholic, but the family said no unless he became Catholic. So he went through kind of a quick thing, became Catholic, and then they didn't get married. So that was that with Catholicism and Mary and all that. Okay. All right. So he's, he's had it pretty tough. Because I was supposed to be in that car in 1973 when my mother was killed. When he was uh, five years old. His dad had just come home from being in the hospital for a couple of weeks. His mom wanted him to rest. So uh, come on, Darren, let's go. We're going to go take uh, grandma home uh, and son Darren here. He doesn't want to go, wants to stay with dad. And my dad was like, just let him stay here. He's fine. And on her way back, she had a head on collision and uh, she died at the age of 24. And you would have been in that car. I would have been in that car. Add to that 31 years of military and law enforcement service. And there's a lot of trauma from those events. And sometimes you had to use deadly force? Yes. You think you're a tough guy. You know, you think you're tough. Oh, I was in a Marine Corps. There ain't nothing going to affect me. I'm bulletproof, you know? No, you're not. No, you're not. It, it eats you. It eats you whether you think so or not. Darren sent me his story in an email, but he also included the audio of these supposed past life regressions. And I listened to bits and pieces, like whatever. But something happens when this light and this face appear that, I mean, it really, it just got my attention. So here now is a beautiful example of God's love and mercy of how to take someone who's off the path and bringing them back onto the straight and narrow and healing him in every possible way. Hello. Well, I, I just got through listening to some of the audio. And as soon as I clicked, it went right to 14 minutes. And what I just heard was uh, amazing. Isn't it amazing? It is amazing. And, and what makes it truly amazing. And when, what year was this? Uh, that would have been in November, I believe, of 2017. That's when all of the confusion was, uh, was happening with me and, and trying to figure things out and where I wanted to go, what I truly believed in. And so, yeah, 2017, big year. 2017, who is married to you? No one. We, we can elaborate that, well, maybe she was protecting me from, you know, this past life regression that you shouldn't dabble in those sort of uh, issues because you just don't, you know, I always, I heard this on your show. What was it called? Dial up a devil or dial a devil or something. Not you on know, my show. I had no episode called dial a devil. No, not no, me. There was, some woman said that. It was like dial up a devil or something. Because she was doing something. Oh, okay. And and the woman said, well, you're just dialing a devil when you do this. Oh, the, oh, the, the new age stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're you're yeah. opening your mind up. Your, your mind is so open. Anything's falling in, including that. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, there is no one that will convince me of what happened with me in those 10, 15 minutes that it was some figment of my imagination. There was some psychological disorders. There's no way. 
it was more realistic than what we experience today. You're sitting there with a uh, woman who does supposedly past life regressions. Correct. Just to kind of get to that point, the reason why I actually wanted to try that was a bit of just trying to understand it, why the rest of the world, not the rest of the world, but a lot of the world's population believes in reincarnation. So I was like, why, why does everybody believe this? Is there something to it? You know, so I, I wanted to do it. And they said that, you know, sometimes with this experience, it can relieve a lot of trauma from your life. And, uh, you know, from what I've been doing for, you know, 31 years in the military, law enforcement, you know, carrying a gun, there comes a lot of violence with that. And I had a lot of trauma with that. And I thought maybe this could possibly relieve some of that trauma. So, you know, some of my experiences in the past, I, I lived down in South America. I lived in Central America. You know, I went to school and I studied actually Latin American culture, the history of Central and South America, basically. And so when I went in to this regression, the first life that pops up is I'm a Spanish conquistador. But it's almost like a dream state, an awakened dream state. So we get through that. And we go through to a second life. And it was, I was like some guy on an island, I think, in the Pacific. And so the, the, the events of the past life regression are start, starting to come to an end. As I'm being brought out of this trans like state, is when. From what all I can tell and what all I know is Mother Mary appeared to me. And it, it was it you you listen to the tape and you can I, I just like groan in almost agony, almost ecstasy type of, of sound. <sighs> what did something flash? What happened? I just feel this overwhelming feeling of love like words cannot describe. And in combination with that feeling, I just see this whitest, golden, brightest light that just appears in my mind but it's not like it's in my mind. It's almost like reality. And the light just encompasses me. And in the middle of that light is where a face just comes into existence. You know, I, I, I said some words. The, the, the lady was asking me, you know, what are you seeing? You know, what, what, what are you experiencing? Who is this person? I mean, I, I wrote all this down and I mean, I, this is, this is what I said during the recording. I feel like an angel. I feel like an angel. You were one with what was happening. You were a part of the light. You were a part of the experience. It's, it's like you were infused your whole mind, body, soul was infused with this light. And it's, and I said, she is good. She protects. She protects. She's good. She's really good. You kept she, repeating that. You kept repeating. Yeah. She protects. She, pr what does that mean? She is the shield of the world. She protects you against all evil. If that's what it felt like? That's what it felt like. That's exactly what it felt like. She's protecting the whole world. Well, you, she was you... protecting me at the moment. Okay. It was like, felt like she was protecting me. And then I went on to say that, that she's beautiful. It just, when she emerged from that light and I'm sitting there, not sitting there. I'm just lying there experiencing this. You can hear it on the tape. You can, 
some of there's a long silence with law with a lot of because I'm just trying to absorb it. And the lady, you know, kept asking me what's going on. And I like I didn't want to break what was happening. I didn't want to break the concentration with what I was experiencing. Well, when I saw the face appear on the right, I'm sorry, the left side of the apparition was my mother. And she was kneeling down with her legs just in a kneeling position, hands on her 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 thighs, and she is this shiny, metallic, golden being. And she's just kneeling there on the left side of Mary. And there's no words spoken. There's no words that are spoken. I can just feel the unconditional love enveloping my entire body. My, my whole essence is a part of this. I honestly felt, well, I eventually described her as Mary because uh, the, the lady asked, well, what is her name? And I was like, the only thing that I could, the, the only thing that came to my mind was Mary. This is Mary. This kid here in Mary, that's all I hear. Long pause, long pause, like, it, this doesn't make a lot of sense, and then you just say, Mary. She just says Mary. And Mary, it, and to you again, that's not going ding, ding, ding in your head of a heavenly being, an oh, yo, that's the Mary, that's the mother of Jesus. Just this woman named Mary? Just this woman was named Mary. That's the only thing that I could understand about her, because the visual that I had was just her face, but she had the veil around her. She, 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 she had that around the, her head. Is that the correct word, veil? I mean, there's there another word for... Uh, mantle kind of comes down mantle, and around. Her mantle, mantle. Okay. That, that's the word I was searching yeah, for. Yeah. She had the mantle around her, and that was the only thing that I could identify, mm -hmm. is this is Mary, and that's how I described it. And I know to this day that that was her because of all the following synchronicities that have been happening in my life. And we'll get to that. We're going to get to that. Yeah. Yeah, but in, in this it, moment, again, here's this obviously beautiful woman looking about how old or is there an age to it? You know, she was probably in her early 30s, maybe late 20s. That's that's how I, I visualized it. But in combination with my mom, you know, everything that had happened in my life through that trauma, it really felt like she was battling and fighting this darkness or evilness or stress, whatever it was that, that, that I was enduring in my life in that time period, she was trying to take this darkness, dissolve it into the, to the light. And that went on for about 10 minutes. And there wasn't a lot of visual at that time from what I remember. Um, there was pauses on that tape and I'm just sitting there. I, I'm just feeling stuff, not necessarily seeing stuff at that moment. And all I know is it felt like the battle was lost. That's what it felt like. I felt like, okay, I, I'm just going deeper. And then all of a sudden I just felt, I just started feeling better and I started feeling like, progress was being made and i even ex i even said on the tape that she is winning she's she's winning this fight against whatever it is she's fighting and you know it was like she was my battle angel she was a the, the my the person who was protecting me and she won i when when i finished and everything was done it wasn't like there was just some abrupt ending to it. It's just, I stopped feeling the blackness and the stress, and it was just all gone. Peace. And you, you experienced, you experienced peace. I experienced peace. That is exactly what I experienced. And that, that whatever battle was fought and that there was a battle going on and she came in 
and took care of it. Absolutely. She saved me. That's all I know. She saved me. It and could, and what do you do with that? Okay, you come out of this and it's like, okay, that was Mary and she's the protector and she just dissolved the uh, all that darkness around me and I have this peace right now and now what? I mean, what, what, do you, what, what, what did you do with that? I tell you what, I, um, I was eating Excedrin on a daily basis just to get rid of headaches, backaches, just body aches. Every, I mean, that was my normal routine is get up, eat a bunch of Excedrin to dull the pain that I was having in my body. I mean, I was getting a little older, so I'm like, oh, it's par for the course, blah, blah, blah. But when I exited from that location, I was at complete peace. There was no, I, I don't really even take Excedrin to this day. Every once in a while, I'll take an aspirin or a Tylenol for a headache. But for like body aches and stuff like that, I don't even I don't even take that stuff anymore. So there was a physical change in your body. There was a physical change as far as relief. My stress level went down. The the trauma. I don't I don't want to say it's completely dissipated, but it is so much better than what it was before. And so, yes, there was an absolute physical change with that. Like, <laughs> you know, I spent a lot of time in the military and in law enforcement. And, you know, if if she could be the commanding officer of all the military, I mean, that's, that's what I <laughs> bring her on, baby. <laughs> right? I'll follow you in battle wherever you want, man. <laughs> you know, and I and that's why I listen to your podcast a lot, because I'm not the only one who's had these experiences. You know, and it reinforces in me what I experienced was absolutely true. Not that I need somebody to convince me because I'm convinced no one, I know that what's going to happen when we die, you're all, we will all experience this light. You will all experience this. The unconditional love, the feeling, it's undescribable in human language. How many times I, I just, have we heard that in near death experiences and things like that? Exactly. How how many times? Yeah. Exactly. There's something to it. And I that it just came out of the blue for me. I mean, <laughs> the blue, Mother Mary blue. Uh, it just came out of nowhere. I had no I, you know, when I converted to be a Catholic and then I basically left, you know, I may have left Mother Mary, but she never left me. I'm telling you, she never did. And I'm not saying you had to be a Catholic to even have Mother Mary protect you because you don't. No, you don't. She's there. It was the most profound moment of my life. And, and ever since that moment, you you just you you chased you chased that white light. You chase it. You want that feeling. You want that understanding of con contentment, peace, love, joy, ecstasy. Because that's what it is. It's beyond our understanding in this human life. It's beyond. There was a point where the facilitator said, uh, may I speak to Mary? Would, uh, yeah, may I speak to Mary? Uh, see if she will allow me. And you said what? What, what came through? <laughs> From what I understood, and I didn't want to be rude to the, to the, to the lady, I was just like, this is not your place. That's what it felt. That's what, and I, that's what I told the lady. I was like, well, this is not your place to, to mess with. Okay. This is between him and I, this is not your place. Let's pause right about here. Then more of this amazing story. And there is more. With Darren, uh, first quick Patreon shout out. Thanks, Linda. Linda Milberg is, has joined the Patreon family and is helping us out. In fact, has been for a while. Thank you, Linda. Appreciate that for keeping this all going. I was talking to Gail on one of these episodes, and, um, and this is one of the aspects of Touched by Heaven, which is so heartwarming, which is conversion. It's conversion. 
uh, when some people have been away from God, from the church for a long, long time, and then something here clicks and they come back, as Gail did. Because you were able to get through to me and bring me back to God, like where I was drifting away. And you open new avenues for me to get to him as well, like learning about Mary. And now I'm more, I read scripture every day. Like I do, like they're very much a major part of my life again. But thanks to you guys and both, like I listened to the shows and I thought this is worth supporting because even if you can reach one other person, oh my God, you've done a miracle. Like you're doing miracles every day. You're reaching people you're able to grab hold of me and bring me back in, you know, so I'm sure there's lots of people out there that you've helped and are helping. So it's a worthwhile cause to me. Thanks, Gail. To join the Patreon family, come here to episode 246 and just click your way through, or you can go to patreon.com and search for Trapper Jack. Thanks so much. All right. Now more with Darren here on Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God afterwards you guys talk about any of this stuff do you afterwards is there time just to say let's go through this uh, who's this mary thing or or was it just over and have a nice day we eventually she was you know we thought about okay well let's do this again and i'm like okay well let me absorb what just happened <laughs> and maybe i'll get back with you because <laughs> this was not normal yeah this was not normal and i haven't been in touch with her since i'm okay. just like I, I haven't pursued that anymore. Interesting what Mary did for you, though, because after this, it was it after this, you then went down to the border to work on the border, yes? Yes. Okay, so let's talk, without going through all the particulars, but you're trying to help. You're, you're, you're part of the process, right, of whether people are being sent out or, or brought in or whatever, right? You're kind of part of that process. But explain, <laughs> explain, the Mary role and what happened. So my, my job ended up being when I was detailed down there and it was only supposed to be 30 days. And so I went down and I ended up staying 90 days and there was a reason why I did that. So I show up at a, and I'm not going to mention where, but a detention facility and my first day on duty, they're like, okay, you're in a pod four. But I walked into that area And I walked up onto my elevated platform where we can monitor everybody. And I look down and there's a pendant of the Virgin of Guadalupe. And I'm like, it just floored me. I'm like, what? On a desk that we have where the computer is and, you know, you have pens and pencils. And there was just this metal on a chain, a really nice one, too. It was a really nice chain. And so it's just sitting there. Our Lady of Guadalupe. I'm like, huh, I guess this is where I'm supposed to be. For 90 days, I sit there, showed up to work, went to pod four. I saw that medal, and it inspired me every single day. I was like, this is where I need to be. There is a reason why I am here. So, you know, and so you're dealing with these people and that some of their events coming, you know, coming north from Central South America, wherever they're coming from, some of it can be very traumatic to them. There's so many horror stories. And I I mean, I could I could tell you all day long about horror stories, but I really felt like my purpose was to go to pod four and to help these people as best as I possibly could. I really felt like I I was helping these people with just the little small things that they needed. I would make that effort to make sure that they had some sort of little creature comfort that could get them through the process to ease the stress, the fear, the pain, the anger, all of it. I'm doing the right thing. I would have these people come up to me and they would be in tears and they would want specifically to, and I'm not patting myself on the back. This is not me. This is all through what mother Mary is having me do. I'm like a, uh, I'm like her instrument in trying to help these people. That's all I was. And these people would come up to me and they would just be in tears. And they're like, God bless you. God bless you for helping us. And I've, I'm telling you, 
that was my confirmation that I was doing something good. That was my confirmation. So 90 days go by. I go back to work on my very last day of work. But all I know is when I showed up, it was gone. The metal had disappeared. And I'm like, where is this metal? I mean, I searched everywhere. I dumped the trash cans out. I'm like, where is this metal? <laughs> and I never did find it. Never did find it. <laughs> and the only thing that I can conclude from that is that it was a sign to me that your mission is complete, at least for now. The mission that you were assigned is now finished. And I've been with you the whole time. And I have been with you the whole time using you as an instrument to try to help these people. And our lady Guadalupe, of course, Mexico. And it's just, it's so, it's perfect. <laughs> Mary, Mary <laughs> appearing then. Yeah, thing. it's perfect. You know, in the Protestant church, they don't really put a lot of emphasis on Mary, which I'm dealing with that now. And it really bothers me. Um, there's a lot of the confusion comes in between the two Protestants, Catholics. You know, I didn't give the Catholic church really a second thought. I mean, honestly, I didn't give religion much of a thought. I mean, I always believed in God. I always believed that there's something there, but I wasn't really involved with it too much. And, uh, so th that's where I started dabbling around. And, you know, once my, my, my daughters came along and it come to realization that, Hey, you know, you got two little girls here. They need some guidance. They need they need some sort of foundation with this stuff to, to at least give them a foundation. And then they can decide eventually on their own how they want to pursue things. Right. You know, and that's maybe something I should do is be more proactive in trying to deliver the message. Because I'm telling you, when I was in Montana, I mean, I, I screamed at God. I was, you know, I would get out on those mountains and I would just, what is it that you want from me? What is my purpose? What is it that you need me to do? Is this after this event? Yes. Yeah. That was last oh, I, year. I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when it gets and your I'm attention still. and then it gets really quiet and you go, well, well now what? You know, and it's like, yeah, now just exactly. wait, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. But you like, what do I do with that? You know, that's my big, that's, I'm telling you, it's, it's driving my entire existence right now. What's my purpose? And I've got, uh, I got some stuff in the works that I think will help me realize maybe what my purpose is. What, and that's why I'm thinking I've arrived to this point that there is a plan that there is something God wants me to do. Who is married to you now? <sighs> she basically guides almost every activity that I try to do in my life. I mean, I'm always searching for something that is going to be with, with what she wants to be done on this planet. And if I can help out, some way, some how, in some insignificant way or some major way, I'm just willing to do it. And she saved me. That's all I know. Thank you so much uh, for this. This was uh, this was a surprising treat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Thanks, Darren. We look forward to finding out what your next assignment is. There's more to come. I know that. Wow. Well, this was different, wasn't it? I wasn't sure where this was going. As you were doing the same thing, going, what is this, Trapper? What is this? Yeah, what, what, the, what the heck? Uh, we haven't been down this road before. So what, so what do we do? Well, we look at the fruit. We look at, look at past life regressions. Is, is that from our God? Is that from the Holy Trinity? Does that have anything to do with the 2,000 years of teachings that we have before us, inspired by the Holy Spirit? Nope. That comes from a much lower level directing us away from Jesus. Uh, so what else? Well, we measure fruit, don't we? Mary arrives on the scene. Was that real? Look at the fruit. Yeah, I'm, I just flashed on what Jesus said. Uh, you don't believe me? Believe the works. What were the works that God performed there through Mary? Un unconditional love. This sense of unconditional love that he'd never felt before. A glimpse of his mom. Lo the love of mom. 
What else? Peace. He was suffering oppression, depression, physical pain, and, and here's Mary, he senses there's a battle going on, and then suddenly there's no more battle. It's all gone. You have to measure the fruit. And now he's left, he has no desire to go back to any of that again, and instead he's back to, again, straight and narrow. It's pretty simple. Love of God, love of all of us, all, 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 everyone around him. So what does he do down at the border? He's on a mission, and there's Mary there reminding him of her and that uh, she has been sent to him from God to assist. And so he gives people creature comforts. He gives them a smile. That's what we're all supposed to do with everyone we come across. We're to be Christ-like figures in, in everyone's life. And that's what Mary is about, bringing, bringing everyone to her son. And there, <laughs> there, there we have Darren. And that's just, uh, it's an incredible story. It's just a remarkable, remarkable story. So thank you for that. So, what is your story? And it's not a competition. Everybody, everybody's got their own story here. Yours might be with an angel, divine intervention, near-death experience, prophetic dream, vision. What is it for you? Uh, let me know here at touchedbyheaven.net. Thank you for that. Magigoriapilgrimage.life. That's the website. It's filling up. We're going to go at the end of May. We're going to stay with one of the visionaries in Magigoria. That would be Maria. This is such a unique place on the planet where miracles are still happening. This is, this is the bridge between heaven and earth. This is where Mary's been appearing every day since 1981. Maria, one of those she's been appearing to. This is the queen of peace. This is Mary as the queen of peace. And she's done so much there in calling for peace in the world, in this very troubled world right now. Uh, but if you want to uh, want to find out more information, here's what you do. MagigoriaPilgrimage.life. You can click here. Uh, the link is here at uh, 100, two, <laughs> what do you say? I said episode 246 here at touchedbyheaven.net or go to or you can go to magigoriepilgrimage.life which is m e d j u g o r j e medjug orge pilgrimage.life make sure you put in trapper when there's a little, a little box will come up and you can put in that as your secret code okay so we know you're you're one of us okay all right so uh, there you go all right and thanks again for any help you want to throw our way through patreon.com and thank you so much we'll see you next week here at touched by heaven everyday encounters with god i'm trapper jack reminding you she saved me that's all i know she saved me